Hi, we're the Simmons family, and I'm Deborah. I'm Tracy. And we have four kids. We have two sets of twins. Peyton and Sophia are seven, and Parker and Sydney are four. Ah! When there's two sets of twins, it's almost like it's exponentially more than just four against two. Ah! Double trouble, look at that, two sets of twins. Sophia <laughs> definitely seems like a teenager already. I don't know, I did it! Keep the door open. Peyton is defiant. Sydney is volatile. No! No! Go. No! No! Parker, he, he likes to get his way. No! Put on the shirt. Oh, You're not gonna get it! No! 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 Yeah. no. no. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Stop is hard to enjoy being around Sophia. the kids. No! I think they just wear you down and beat the life out of you. It's about getting into your room and staying in your room. All right, I'll be in my office. My office is in my home, and a lot of times if I'm in my office and they're upstairs, it just sounds like a herd of elephants running. What? You guys need to settle down. When it comes to discipline, I have like this attempt out. And then I just, I just give up. Stop slamming the door. Stop, stop. Don't stop. No. My word. Look, every time they draw a line in the sand, the kids just wipe it out. Discipline is, we're not consistent with it at all. Parker, please, seriously. Parker. <sighs> Parker. Why don't you guys make your beds? How about that? No. Yes. No. Why don't you no. make your bed? No. <laughs> Why don't you make your bed? You don't talk like that. Out here, no. See? Out. Don't, don't talk like that. Don't, yeah. don't be naughty. Yeah. You be naughty? Yeah. Can you be naughty? Yeah. Why are you being naughty? Yeah. Oh, this is like Groundhog Day. This man keeps repeating himself, and the kids ain't listening. Oh. Oh. No, what are you doing? The way they operate, all four of them could be getting in trouble. No, no, no. And they feed off of each other. They absolutely feed off of each other. <laughs> unlock the door. You have to the count of three and unlock the door. One, two, three. OK, Parker, now you're in trouble. Well, that's a good way to avoid discipline, right? Just lock the doors. Open the door. Open the door. I guess I wish I could just figure out how to juggle everything. Being a mom and not feeling like I can I can do my job. No! Yep. No! And how do I manage all four of them? And cooking and cleaning and doing everything else at the same time. Stop! Yeah. Yeah. Put your pajamas on. Super nanny, come on, it's two against four. We need your help. Hey, mom and dad. I know you got your hands full with double trouble, so I'm on my way. Hello. Hello. Pleased to meet you, Jeff Ross. I'm Deborah Simmons. Hi, Deborah. Thank you. As Joe was coming into my house, I was a little nervous because I know that she can be tough. Hi. Hi. I'm Tracy. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Joe. After I met the family, Dad went off to work, and whilst Mum was trying to serve lunch, the two sets of twins were going wild. Ow! Ow! Get up! Sydney, get off the table. Oh, stop it now. Mum didn't seem interested in trying to impose any discipline whatsoever. <laughs> Yes, you're gonna get. Parker, stop throwing my shoe. Throwing shoes and not minding mum at all. Um, that's not a good start. Hi, boy. That is enough. Hi, boy. Parker, stop. Hi, boy. Stop. Hi, boy. Hi, boy. Hi, boy. Hi, boy. I saw that mum couldn't control the two sets of twins' behaviour. So then when dad tried to do it, I saw that he couldn't do it either. Hey, Parker, we don't do that. Get, get down off of that. Guys, do I need to get rid of that thing? Sydney. Okay, guys. 
This is getting... Oh, Parker! No. Peyton, please get down. He begs the children to be quiet. Please. Can you... Can you guys just be good? And they look at him and laugh. Sydney, don't do it again. And then ignore him and carry on doing what they were doing in the first place. Come on, Sydney, please. I mean, it really is this whining tone. Sydney. Kind of like a broken record, really. Can you stay down off of that? Yeah. Please. Please. <laughs> please. OK, Sydney, come on. Dad finally decided to do some discipline, but his idea of a timeout was pleading. <laughs> now, don't kick. Don't, don't even start that. Please. Please. Yeah. Do you want to go in the closet? OK. <sighs> Sit right there, and I'll let you know when you can come out. I don't know what to do. I just, at that moment, thought, well, where's Mum in all this chaos? Hey. I just kind of peeked into the bathroom area, and Mum was hiding. I'm hiding. You're hiding? To have what? That's Your breakfast? Um, just a snack. I usually hide from the kids when I eat, just so I can have a little peace and quiet. What have you got there? Some uh, fruit? Uh, and yogurt. Oh, nice. Healthy. Yeah. I found Mum hiding out, eating in the bathroom, so that she could get a few minutes of peace. No, no, don't. Don't, don't start hitting and stuff. Parker. OK, then, Parker. No one's going to share their toys with you if that's how you want to act. Tracy, why are you talking to Parker through a door? He locked the door on me. No child should be able to lock themselves into their bedroom and, and keep out everybody else. These kids are far too young. Far too young. What kind of foods do the kids like to eat? What kind of things do you prepare for them? They like, uh, like the dino chicken, mini yeah. corn dogs. Macaroni and cheese. Yeah. They're not really too fussed on fruit and veg and stuff. No. When Mum served dinner, I saw she wasn't exaggerating. <laughs> These kids sat down at the table and they weren't even eating what they should have been. Where's the healthy food plan? Yeah. Do you particularly yeah. like to cook or, or not really? I mean, I some do. people don't like it. You do. I love to cook. You love to cook, right? Mum just wasn't instilling her healthy eating habits, and I want to know why. What's the response that you get? I don't like... I don't like that. Right. I'm not going to eat that. I'm not going to try that. Right. It could be my own macaroni and cheese. Yeah. It's not from the box. Right. You know, the chicken is not shaped like a dinosaur. After the kids had their fill of what Mum had put out there, it was time for dessert. Their end goal is to get through dinner as fast as possible so they can get dessert, and really as much as they can possibly hold. Cookies! There's four more left, guys. Parker, how many cookies did you eat? How many did you have? What about you, Sydney? Mm -hmm. I never I Kids really should have been winding down after dinner, but when Dad took them upstairs, they were still Parker. very lively. Stop, Parker! Parker can get, I won't say violent for a four-year-old, but, I mean, he gets very upset. Parker was having a meltdown, and Dad was back to being a broken record again. Stop, Parker. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> OK, that's crazy. Now stop it. Stop it. Stop it, Parker. Honestly. No discipline, locked doors and bad eating habits. I've got plenty of food for thought on this family. It's time for me to leave. Tomorrow morning we will be having a discussion. These parents do know what they need to correct. Good night. Good night. Good night. I just think that they're waiting for somebody to give them a kick up the backside and uh, give them some motivation to get on with it, you know?
What I want to address the importance of the issues that you're going through and what I've noticed so we can get to the bottom of some of those, okay? Okay. So can we talk about discipline? Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay. Who does what and when and for how long? Yeah. yeah. There's no consistency. There's no fault. There's, there's empty threats and that's it. Well, the thing is, you, you guys lack making a decision. That's true. <laughs> Tracy, I don't know how you listen to your voice all day because every minute you are telling the children over and over again to stop doing something. Yeah. Look, you see this? This was, this was made by you. Okay, this was made by Tracy. It's the record that says over and over and over and over again. Peyton, don't do that. Sydney, stop doing that. You're like a broken record if I could snap this thing. Here, I'll take that. <laughs> a broken record. We need to stop this, okay? When it comes to actually stepping up and telling these kids, no, no, it's no doesn't doesn't appear now why is that I, I don't think I know how to do that not effectively and then I go upstairs in the house and there are locks on the doors so now your kids can lock themselves away from their parents that's not a good thing you should always be able to go into your child's bedroom if there was a fire then what we'd have to scramble to find a key because there's normally scramble you can't scramble when there's a fire you'd be kicking that door down, or at least trying to. I mean, it, it's, it's not common sense, the pair of you. It's really not. The fact that they can just lock that door, and let's face it, they're locking that door against the pair of you when they don't want to hear mm -hmm. what you have to say or they can't get their own way, they lock the door and use it. I mean, that should never happen. We can change that. Yeah. What I want to go on to next is meal times because this is when I'm seeing no common sense. There's no logic behind what you do, really. They pretty much dictate what they want to eat. And for an easy life, you say, OK, fine. But actually, it's not an easy life. Not when I'm watching the kids eat the amount of food that they ate yesterday that didn't even consist of one piece of fruit or one piece of vegetable. If you're going to give your kids food that are high in fats and sodium and sugar, their blood sugar level is going to peak. You're going to get like a 10 minute spurt and then the kids are going to come down. They're going to need that raised again. I'm hoping one of you two are going to justify why that happens. I just don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear the whining and the complaining about what I put in front of them. Uh, you and 200 million other parents. <laughs> but sometimes as parents, you have to do the things that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing is you guys saying the same thing over and over again and no results. Well, guess what? We're going to change the results, right? Which means we've got to change. So I look forward to seeing you guys very, very soon because uh, you're going to be rolling up your sleeves and working hard. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good, thank you. With parents not knowing how to discipline, it was my first priority. Hello. Hello. Hey, Joe. Yeah, right, Tracy. And I need to make sure that these kids are not locking themselves away from their parents. The first thing I do want to do is to change these locks on the kids' doors, OK? As you can see, no locks on these. OK. Yeah. Those kids do use the locks, whether it's in the bathroom or it's in their bedrooms, to keep us out. So it's definitely a good thing to get rid of those locks. OK. It works. I expect these parents, as they become older, to have some etiquette and to knock on the door and, you know, to ask before they can come in. And that's something that they'll grow into as a family. But at the moment, they're, they're all young children, and I believe that parents exercise the right to be able to go into their children's room and to make sure that they're OK. Yeah. Now that these kids can't lock themselves away, it's time for me to put a discipline technique in place. I'm going to use a reflection room for all four kids and leave the door open whilst they're thinking in there. Whilst Dad was out playing with the children... There you go, look! Mum helped me set up the reflection room. This is going to be the reflection room, which is going to be your time out, OK? I call it the reflection room because, you know, it is about the kids reflecting on what they've done. So they start to recognise that you're going to put some very firm boundaries in place. I'm going to ask you to clear the crayon area in a moment, okay. because the reflection room is 
It's a boring room. It means we're here alone, just not doing anything while the rest of the kids are out having fun and playing. OK, I'll clean okay. it. But before right. we'd even finished, Parker gave her a good reason to use it. <laughs> is it? If we win this Parker, that is Sophia's toy. You're going downstairs to sit in the reflection room. Do you hear me? Don't, and you don't hit. Don't kick, don't kick. You have to stay in here for five minutes because you did not ask Sophia if you could take her toy. And then once she wanted it back, you threw it. Parker, stop. Come out. Just getting Parker into the room took a lot out of Mum. And I didn't really know whether she would follow through with discipline. So I took her aside to talk to her. And that's when she broke down. Inside, I can see it. I can see how emotional you are inside. Right? I can see that inside you. You can get tough and you're going to deal with these kids. You know why? Because these kids are going to carry on like that and walk over you. And I know that you've got that mental strength to deal with that. They're going to find respect for you. You know why? Because you are a loving mother. You are a mother who wants to do best by your kids. I do. After the talk, she got an apology from Parker. She'd done it. Parker, I need an apology. Sorry. Mm. But it wasn't long before Parker would start all over again. Mommy gave you a warning, and you're continuing to disrupt the game. This time, I suggested that Parker do his time out in the kitchen so that Mum could keep an eye on the kids in the backyard. That boy pulled every trick out of his hat to push Mum's buttons. Um, just take him back to the door and he's five minutes have to start all over again. Take him back. He definitely wanted to get my attention. He definitely wanted me to respond to him. Ignoring Parker when he is in that zone and in the timeout, it, that's very hard. It's very frustrating. The other kids came inside, and that's when Mum decided to put Parker back into the reflection room, and he went absolutely mad. <laughs> Parker was so mad that he became very destructive and started to tear up everything in that room. It seemed like it took forever. And it was exhausting. But I knew I had to stick with it because I can outdo them. They're not going to get the better out of me. <laughs> Parker, can you apologize to Mommy? Sorry. Mum's going to have more challenges like this, but if she remains consistent, then the kids are going to realize pretty quickly she means business. Next on the discipline agenda was mending dad's broken record. This is what I hear. Painton, don't do that. Get, get down off of that, guys. Sydney. Oh, Parker. Peyton, please get down. Ah! Voices project well in the shower. And so I decided to give dad a fun vocal coaching session there. What you want to be able to do is to slow your speech pattern down, OK? You need to behave yourself. You need to behave yourself. Here, look, come down. Come down so you're giving me eye contact. And even if your head is slightly tint, you're looking at them like this. Behave yourself right now, otherwise you're going into time out. Let's try that. Behave yourself right now, otherwise you're going into time out. Dad's made some progress, but the real test is going to be in a real life situation. Sydney, if you're going to be outside, you got to have some shoes on, OK? Later on in the afternoon, I saw Sydney starting to play up. And that would be when Dad would use the reflection room and hopefully a firm voice too. 
I went over again with Dad how to use discipline properly and his firm voice. I then want you to go over to her, give her eye contact, come down to her level and really lower your tone. And sent him back to deal with Sydney. OK, so here we go. I knew it was going to be a battle because it's Sydney. I mean, she's so strong-willed. You want to be outside, you need to have shoes on or you're going to go sit in timeout. Sydney. <laughs> I just thought, oh boy, here we go. Stop! She was fighting and clawing every step of the way. <laughs> Got her into the room and pretty much knew it was a long battle. Come down and say to her, you did not listen to Dad, and so you're staying in here. Sydney. <laughs> you, Sydney, you did not listen to Daddy. So you're going to stay in here. This time, Dad was going to draw the line and stay put. You move her back in. Sit, don't worry about that. Dad started to panic. I mean, this man really does sweat when he gets nervous. It was far from over. OK, so no communication, and you just literally continue where you were. Dad was using the discipline technique for the first time. However, Sydney, mm, she did not like it. I was kind of worn out myself, and I, I think Sydney had kind of worn down as well. After Sydney did finally stay in the room for four minutes, Dad did the last steps of the technique by making sure he explained what she did wrong and asking her for an apology. Sydney. <clears throat> the reason you were in here, Sydney, is because you wouldn't listen. You need to apologize to Daddy for not listening, Sydney. So lift her up, give her a hug and a kiss. Come here, sweetie. In the past, the, the kids always did win when it came to discipline. I love you. And today, for once, I won the battle. The line has been drawn. There is a line. It will not move. All right, we've done the hugs and the kiss. All right, no grudges, OK? Let's just move on. Let's enjoy the fun. Let's go the kids play. are out playing cards. You going to play Go Fetch? Is it the last of Sydney? I, I don't think so. I think Sydney's going to give them another run for their money. But if I can really have the opportunity to teach Mum and Dad to have a backbone, then it's going to be good for them when I'm not there. You going to play Go Fetch? All right, Deborah, come and stand over here. Next was to tackle that terrible food plan. And I saw that Mum had a big box of recipes, so it was about time we started to use them. We're going to muscle into all of these recipe books. You're going to pick out some really healthy options, all right? And you're going to come up with seven meals. And you're going to place each meal into one of these Triangles. I eat healthy, but I don't provide that for the kids. And you love to cook, so I, I mean, do. once you start, I mean, look at all this lovely root vegetables, look. I think I will have to force them to eat different things because they're not used to eating that way, but it's definitely worthwhile. To get the kids involved, the triangles became a part of the meal wheel game. And what we're going to do is each one of you are going to get a chance to choose a meal by spinning the meal and then it will be on a certain night. I loved that wheel, the food wheel that Joe brought in. Who's going to go first? I got them involved, got them excited about eating that food. OK, who's next? Spin the meal. <laughs> One of my favourites. Mm. All right, Parker, what you got? All right. One of your favourites, Parker. <coughs> oh, you've chose your favourite. OK, grilled fish. We have, what do we have there? Grilled chicken, sweet potatoes, vegetables. And? Fruit dessert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, now we've chosen, the only thing left to do right now is to go and shop for this food. So, we're going to go off to the farmer's market, all right? And we're going to do a little bit of shopping, and we're going to do a little bit of tasting as well. <laughs> so who's ready to go to the farmer's market? Me! All right, let's go then. 
When we went to the farmer's market, I wasn't really sure how that was going to go. We're going to go around very slowly, and we're going to start to sample things that we like, OK? The biggest thing is that they have to be enthusiastic about their children trying different fruits and veg. Let's try one of these. It's really important to just be very eager, let them sample, and they start to tell you about what they like and what they don't. Do you like this? You do? Sydney, is that a thumbs up? That's a thumb, that's a two, oh, she gave me a two thumbs up. The kids tried different fruits, they had raw vegetables. What do you think? You see, and you know what you just said? You said, I don't want to try it, but look, you like it. Oh, we got to get sweet potatoes. For some parents, it's really problematic to get their kids to eat fruit, vegetables and a healthy eating plan. But with some good organisation and getting the kids really engaged and interested, it is possible. Bye, Mango. Bye, Mango. <laughs> mango chicken. It's wonderful when you see that, it really is. <laughs> <laughs>
but you actually didn't go over and give them a warning. I'm telling you right now, stop this behaviour, otherwise I'll be putting you into the reflection room. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the next clip here. What do you want to drink? Milk, water, or We don't have pop anymore. Daddy and I dumped it out. Why? This is not good for you. Drink that water. Very pleased to see that. Much needed, and I'm sure you've noticed a difference as well. Yes, mm -hmm. we have. Never be afraid to tell your kids why. You know, that it is high in sugar, that there are lots of additives, preservatives. Let them know that the choices that you're making for them are healthier ones because you, you care about what they are drinking, what they are eating. Okay. All right? So we'll move on to Dad's voice. I'm it. Peyton, stop throwing the pillows at Sydney. Come over here and sit down. If you're playing, get your feet in there right now. If you're not playing, we're going to start, and you, you will be left out. You can make a choice as to how you want to play the game. If you want to play the game right, you make the choice. Very good. Look at you. <laughs> You've been going to the restroom a lot. You've been singing in that shower. Have you heard you singing in, in that shower? <laughs> Straight away, you nipped that in the bud. You came right down with your tone of voice. You slowed your speech pattern down. Absolutely fantastic. Well done, Tracy. Thank you. I mean, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> done really well there. Okay, Mum, let's take a look at yours. Peyton, Wyatt. Sophia, what are you playing? Please tell them. Sydney, stop yeah. yelling. Yeah. What happened, Parker? Yeah. Sydney, Peyton, no throwing. Yeah. Sophia, yeah. Sydney, Peyton, yeah. Peyton, Sydney, keep your hands and your feet to yourself. Sydney, what did I just tell you? I've got a record you can borrow. <laughs> <laughs> I think right. I've got my own. We need to work on the voice big time, uh -oh. Deborah. Okay. No, I just, and um, how are we going to do that? Well, you've done such a great job. You're going to teach your wife. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of things that we need to really tighten up and tweak with regards to your voice, your posture. Mum needs to step up. She does. She needs to become more assertive, take a hold of those reins, because if she doesn't, she will go back to square one very, very quickly. So let's get cracking, because we still have lots of work to do, all right? Thank you. <laughs> After the DVD meeting, I knew that Mum needed more coaching with her voice. Go play for a minute while we talk. And as I'd previously already helped Dad, I enlisted his help. Basically, everything that you learn from me, you're actually going to teach each other, and it just helps you to feel supported by one another. So I had Tracy take Mum up to the shower and do some voice training. What we just practiced doing was just talking deeper. We also practiced like getting down to their level, so we would just get down like this. It helps to bring your voice down a little bit. And then just, you know, don't do that or else you're going to time out. Don't do that or else you're going to time out. <laughs> I thought, uh, that is crazy. Why am I getting in the shower? And why did he get in the shower with Joe? Kind of goofy at first, but and, and, and all about slowing down, talking deeper, and really getting their attention. I mean, because it was like, uh, uh, you know, where I was just whining all the time. So practice that again. Parker, Parker. But it definitely worked. I could hear myself. Parker, get over here right now. That was good. And. You know, after that, I could use it. I could bring back that voice that I needed. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it out in the real world. There we go. <laughs> Parker? <gasps> no. Just a few minutes later, Mum got a chance to put that new voice into practice. Oh, surprise, surprise. Parker was playing up again. Parker? <gasps> Immediately, when Parker started acting up, I just thought, there is just no rest. Parker, you have a choice. No, no choice. He has a warning. So your tone of voice is without, is absolute, it's with conviction. What I need Deborah to be is more assertive. We want these children to recognize that mum is not a pushover. Parker, you're sitting in timeout because you would not listen. And I asked you, this is your timeout spot. <laughs> You have to be on and you have to be prepared to turn it on. And so 
I just sucked it up and did it. Get away from me, butthead. When she placed Parker out to do his timeout, he knew. He knew she wasn't messing around. Now, when he's done his four minutes, you're going to go over to him with the same firm voice. You need to tell me you're sorry. Remember, it's all about your body posture. You're upright, you're confident, you're assertive, and you're taking care of this. You're taking care of it because you are not going to be a pushover. You're going to be assertive in the way you address it. Off you go. Parker, I put you in timeout because you did not listen. Parker, you need to apologize. Sorry. A sincere apology is where he's going to give you the eye contact. If he doesn't do that, then walk away. I could see that this discipline process was really taking its toll on Mum. And when I just took her to the side, all this emotion just came to the top. You're doing this beautifully. This is a complete 360 turnaround. Completely. Do you feel different? I do. And I think the DVD was an eye opener. Looking at myself. Good. Good. I mean, she broke down. Don't get upset with yourself. Don't, don't get angry with yourself. You learned from it. That's what's good about it. You learn from it. That's a good thing, right? Okay, you'll change it. That's a good thing. That's a good thing, right? Right. I'm a passive. I'm a passive. Assertive. Okay, assertive. Parker, I need that apology. She walked with purpose. She spoke with conviction. Sorry. And she came out with a result because he did what he was told. I was very, very pleased with her. After he got out of timeout and I offered him a drink, he said thank you. Thank you. Which really made me feel good. Now that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I am talking about. With mum now gaining control, which is a good thing, it's time for me to go. Jojo's gonna leave now. Goodbye, young man. Are you gonna shake Jojo's hands? Are you gonna go all shy on me? <laughs> it's been a really wonderful experience for me working with the Simmons family. Bye. They were on board from the get-go. They supported each other a hundred percent. Bye, Sophia. Take care, darling, okay? Thanks, Joe, for helping my family. What I want to say to you both is that you've worked very, very hard. You have recognised what was necessary, OK, to change, and you've done it. So keep it up. Oh, thank you. Joe, thank you so much for coming into our home and putting our family back together. I feel very confident and very empowered. All right, keep up your work. And yourself with that voice, OK? We've come so far. Just to sit back and think about all the improvements we've made, it's unbelievable. Bye. 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 Take Bye, care. Joe. Bye, Joe. Bye-bye. Mum and Dad have worked really hard. And as a result of that, all four kids have been very receptive to change, which is absolutely fantastic. So hopefully, this family will understand the importance of what they've done to continue in their success.